Manchester United is finished and I can't wait for this season to be over. Just look at these stats. We have conceded 81 goals, which is the most goals we have conceded since 1977. We already have 13 losses this season, which is the most we have ever had in the Premier League season. Not only this, we are 8th in the league with a minus 3 goal difference. We are below Chelsea. Chelsea, who are who have been a joke all the season, we are below them. And we have conceded the most shots and we also have the most XG conceded. Just to give you a reference, that's worse than Sheffield United, who are already relegated. We are doing worse than them. We are currently playing like a championship team and it showed in this Crystal Palace match. So now the obvious question comes, who is to blame? And let's talk about the hot topic, Eric Ten Hag. I've been supporting Ten Hag throughout this whole season, even throughout all the defeats. But he keeps making major mistakes. I know there are a lot of injuries. We didn't even have a center back this game. Evans failed his fitness test and he still played. And Casemiro, the less said about him, the better. So in this case, when Evans is not even match fit, and Casemiro who can't defend, why did Amrabat not start the match? Ten Hag decided to start Eriksen, Mount and Menu. All three of them can't defend. Menu can defend, but he's not a proper defense in between them. And Eriksen doesn't have any legs. So for some reason, Ten Hag decided to play three number eights against a team which has already defeated Newcastle, which has already defeated Liverpool in their recent matches under Glasner. And for some reason, Ten Hag decided not to play a defensive midfielder to give cover to a non-existent CBs. This was the major mistake which led to a defeat of Amrabat not starting over Eriksen. The second mistake which Ten Hag did was playing Bissaka on left back once again. Dalo played really well at left back last time. And yes, Bissaka is playing some of his worst games in a centered t-shirt. But still, keeping Bissaka at left back destroyed our attack. Every time ball went to Bisaka, the attack was dead on the left side. If Dalo played on the left back, I believe you could have scored a goal from there. But this is on Ten Hag for forcing Bisaka on left back once again. If you have liked my video so far, then I would really appreciate it. You can click on the like and subscribe button below to be a part of the community and to be notified of future uploads. Another mistake Ten Hag is making is Anthony's favoritism. Anthony was arguably the worst player on the pitch. And he only played 60 minutes. He stopped so many attacks all on his own. His passing was bad. His crossing, I don't think even he did a cross. His shots were bad. His dribbling was bad. He offered nothing in this game. And yet, Ahmad was only substituted in the 80th minute. Anthony not only started the match, he survived till 60 minutes. And even when Ten Hag decided to substitute him, he substituted Anthony for Amrabat. Like, what kind of substitution was that? Why did he not make a straight switch for Anthony and Ahmad? And switch off Amrabat for Ericsson? If at half time Ten Hag had the balls to switch Ericsson and Anthony out for Ahmad and Amrabat, we were only 2 nil down at that point. We could have recovered. But no, he wanted to go with his, his favourites. Ericsson offered nothing in this game. And yet he survived 90 minutes, which is just crazy to think about. Yes, we had position, but outside position, we had nothing. We were dominated in each segment. We were playing like a championship team against a mid-table Premier League team. And that shows that this team is a championship team currently, no matter which players play. And that does come down to Ten Hag to some degree. Now the big question comes, do we sack Ten Hag or keep Ten Hag? And I think by this point, everyone has decided on Ten Hag. Either you are Ten Hag out or you are Ten Hag in. For me personally, I think Ten Hag should stay at least till Christmas. This season is out of ordinary. It's a crazy season. We, had, we have had 60 plus injuries. No centre-backs, no left-back, single striker. There are a lot of circumstances to give Ten Hag benefit of the doubt. But at the same time, the way we are performing, the way Ten Hag keeps making basic mistakes, I can easily see why people want Ten Hag to be sad. Ten Hag already has interest from Bayern and Ajax. So it's not like he will be out of job, even if he gets sad. And if a big club like Bayern wants to hire Ten Hag, it just shows that Ten Hag has quality in him.
and he can't show it at the toxic club like United. That's why I want him to give till Christmas under a new management, new structure, new transfers. Now, it's not all down to the manager, of course. Let's talk about the players, the disgraceful players. I have three players which were like the worst of the worst this game. First comes Casemiro. I don't know what has happened to Casemiro. He was one of our best players last season. This season, he has been one of our worst players. So I don't know how that transformation has happened so fast. In the past two games, right, I don't know why does he keep spamming slight tactics. Like he just can't do normal tackles anymore. And the biggest thing is, his slight tackles miss so many times. In this game, he was dribbled past eight times and no other player has done this. That just shows how poorly he's, he's playing. He's a liability in this team. He was responsible for at least two of the goals. Two of the goals. In one goal, he missed his slight tackle on Olise. In the second goal, which was the fourth one, I don't know what was he even doing by the corner. Like, why didn't he just kick, kick it out? He was at fault for two goals and I think he should be sold, no matter what. I don't care if you sell him for a million pound or two million, just get him gone. And the bigger problem comes that we need two defensive midfielders after we sell Casemiro, which I don't know how we will need to with our current budget. And the next two players, I've already talked about him in brief, Ericsson and Van Bissaka. Both of these players have once again shown that they are not up to the quality of United and they need to be sold as well. Ericsson already has interest from Turkey and I talked about it in my last video about the transfer rumors. Visaka as well, he's not, I don't know what's going on with him. He doesn't look interested. Like, it seems like he's being forced to play against his will. And when that happens, the player needs to go. Besides this, each and every single player had a bad game. I don't think any player had a good game. Onana, you could be say that he was at fault for a few of the goals. Like, he considered them too easily. But what can he even do? He, Onala has to face 20 shots a game. Of course, he's gonna let some in. Dalo just had a normal game. He couldn't affect it. Menu and Ganacho as well. They couldn't do anything in this game. They weren't influencing it positively. They were just there. Hoyland had a bad game once again. I don't know why does he keep playing as a target man. I don't know if it's Ten Hag's tactics or it's Hoyland doing it on his own. But Holland as a target man, as a back to goal striker, is not working currently. He needs a few more years of experience to be able to do that. Holland's strength is his speed and his shooting. He needs to be played balls beyond the large defender, through balls, crosses, stuff like that. But currently he's playing as a target man where he only gets balls from the keeper, like 40 yard pings, and he, can, and he cannot hold him. He doesn't have the quality for that right now. And if he keeps doing that, he will be put under a lot more pressure. Like, this is just an unnecessary thing to do. Raj Ragnik, two years ago, said that this club needs open heart surgery. And we have all seen that that's true. But the only thing is, the Glazers couldn't do it. The Glazers didn't have the knowledge to be able to do that. Nor did they want to do it themselves. Can Ineos do it? That's the main question. If Ineos walks in the same steps as Oclazers and does not transfer out the majority of this club, I think I lose faith in them. If Ineos is serious about reviving Manchester United as a club, as a brand, as a powerhouse, they need to sell 90% of this club. Whether it's this summer or whether it's in the next two seasons. But they need to start doing a major clear out from this season like I already said before we have already conceded the most goals since 1957 and we have had a most defeats in the Premier League season 13 and we are on 54 points we need 58 points to match a record of our lowest points tally ever in a Premier League season these are the three records the funny thing is all three of them are going to be broken it will get worse because our next four games are Arsenal, is Newcastle, Brighton, and Man City. I can see us losing all four of these games. So, I think all of these records are going to get broken. Most goals, most defeats, fewest points, lower tally than Moyes had in 2013 when he was sacked. 
So I think it's really, really, really difficult for Ten Hag to survive. And he will survive only if Ineos believe in him. If Ineos has a single percent of doubt, I think he's gone. In any case, if Ten Hag gets sacked or not, the players need to go. The players need to go because they're not up to the standard. They are playing like a championship team. They don't have any passion. They don't have any energy. They don't have any basics in there. Let me know in the video down below. What do you think? Should Ten Hag stay? Should Ten Hag go? If you think Ten Hag should be gone, then who do you think should be the next manager of United? Now, if you have watched my video so far, then I would really appreciate it. You can click on the like and subscribe button below and to be a part of the community. Now, if you want to know which are the players which are currently being linked out of the club, which can be sold, and the players we are looking to buy, then you can click on this video right here where I discuss all of our transfer rumors, all of our transfer targets from the news last week. I will see you all again after the next match, which is against Arsenal. I don't know what's going to happen. I think we'll lose heavily. But I'll see you then. Thank you for watching my video. Goodbye.